Today I want to talk a little bit about social media. Thailand, YouTubers, TikTokers, Instagrammers. The way that the YouTube algorithm tends to function is that one content maker will make a video about a topic. That topic might get very popular and the other content makers will see the topic and generally make similar videos. This is the trending formula. And it means that the viewers will often get a large batch of similar content at the same time. Recently, I made a video about why expats leave Thailand. And then over the past month or so, I saw that topic really start to trend. And suddenly my feed was filled with videos about why expats are leaving Thailand. I live in Thailand. Expats come and go all the time. There isn't a particular trend of expats leaving Thailand. But if you were to watch the YouTube feed, you might have the impression that expats were packing up en masse. There's so many strategies involved on the content production side to get those clicks, to get those views, that it can really distort reality. Street, not get run over. Crossing the street is fun. It's a game of chicken that you probably lose if you try to play it, but don't. One of the subconscious differences that YouTubers will tend to have in how they frame Thailand to the viewers is how long they've lived in Thailand and what stage of life they're in in their journey here. When people first arrive and actually decide to live here, generally they have the rose-colored glasses on. Everything is great. They don't see any negatives yet, but of course there are. Every country has positives and negatives. And you can also find content producers on entirely the other side of the spectrum. They maybe have been here for too long, they're too jaded, and they seem to be critical and negative about everything. When you encounter content producers that talk about has Thailand become less friendly, often it's because they've lived here for a lot longer and they themselves probably became less friendly and they probably smile less and so other people smile back less and that's a, a loop that takes on its own life. across a lot of content recently, a lot of videos of foreigners behaving badly. And this gets a lot of mainstream media attention here. And it got me thinking about whether or not foreigners are actually behaving more badly now than they did in the past, or whether or not we have more social media attention. You are getting this trend of negative content. These are creators that deliberately try to make negative content because they know that people will watch it, people will comment and argue in the comments, and people will send it to other people. One video for, of a TikToker from the United States behaving very rudely got millions of views recently. That guy was just a tourist. And then he disappears and he goes and does it in another country. Social media has made it so that everybody's kind of an ambassador for their own society, their own culture when they're outside of their own country. These types that'll make this negative clickbait stuff, not even clickbait, negative algorithm bait, they get a massively disproportionate amount of attention compared to all the well-behaved foreigners that actually live here and come here. Sometimes I think it would be nice to return to an era where none of this existed. The first time I traveled was in 2006. I had to go to an internet cafe if you wanted to communicate about anything or book something. And even then, I didn't have a credit card. So I wandered around for about three months, show up at the hostel, hope there was a bed when you arrived. It was definitely a more living in the moment environment and more adventurous and exploratory. It feels like the world's gotten a lot smaller, a lot more interconnected. Culturally, socially, you're 
not really disconnected from anything in your home world. I think that might have something to do with some of the crackdowns on visas that exist in Thailand, if you're familiar with all of that. In the past, if you were to move to a country like Thailand, say in the 90s or 80s, it would be a total disconnect from your life, your world, your only communication with family, back home would be through a long distance phone call. That interconnected world is making it very easy for people to watch a YouTube channel like this one. It gives you full guides about how to move to a country, how to try living in a country. This migratory pattern isn't isolated to places like Thailand. It's actually on a much larger scale. People are moving into places like the United States and Europe. It's part of the same trend. You've got this huge movement of people because of the interconnected nature. All these people have cell phones too. All these people can communicate back home. If you're familiar with Bangkok's famous overhanging cables, they're all coming down here. Over the years I've been here, there's definitely been a kind of Singaporization of Bangkok. That's been the direction of the Bangkok Metropolitan Authority. I like Singapore, but I kind of like Bangkok more. I like the, the hustle and bustle, the street culture, the energy, the changing face of Bangkok. I think this city changes very, very quickly, including, as I've been talking about, the emergence of the social media, content, culture. What do you guys think of that? What, what are your opinions? I like the idea of having a historical record on the ground of my existence of Bangkok as I existed in it. And that's kind of why I started making the YouTube videos, an existential crisis. Because I, I do actually work and my job pays well. I'm a little more critical of the people that just come here to be content creators. They simply haven't been here for long enough to give an accurate representation. Thailand, it's actually illegal to film people in public without their consent and post it on social media. There's a very specific law against that. And yet you get all kinds of content producers to come here and stick a camera in people's faces, especially in the nightlife areas. There's a few channels that I noticed that were basically built around that, like that's all they do. These types of creators, actually they end up in Thai Facebook forums as well. That's how I came across one of them. I was in one of the forums, they were posting about how these rude foreigners were harassing people and filming them. I think it's more important that content producers respect people's privacy. When I'm out, I will be capturing people in public as I'm walking around, but if, but if somebody doesn't wanna be in a video, I've seen it many times, people put a hand over their face or they're walking out of one of these nightlife areas and I totally understand. They probably don't wanna be in the video and I do edit them out. We're now over at Sukhumvit 21. It's got so much energy. It's such a novel and unique place. It always reminds me of when I first came to Bangkok like 10 years ago. So I stayed right over here and it was a wild and magical place. Full rose colored glasses on. That's the best time. It's a bit like chasing the dragon if you've ever heard of that saying from another culture, but that's what people do. They come here, they have a great time and then they sort of remember that and they come back and maybe don't get that same moment ever again. They keep chasing it. For me, I think it's better to evolve and change and appreciate different things. I think then you actually grow within Thailand. You either grow within Thailand or you grow jaded in Thailand. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.